Hi everyone, my name is Vasily Alenik, I'm a .NET developer and you are watching the Minimal API Core series. In the series, we are building a REST API for a habit tracker mobile application using the industry's best practices. This time around, we will continue the previous video's topic about setting up the API endpoints, uh, but I've taken a little bit of another approach. I've written all the code base behind the scene. And right now we are just going to run through the implementation itself to save you some time. So let's get started. In here in the program.cs what has changed is basically I've moved all the DI setup for the habits model in a separate installer which we can find under the habits folder over here we have a habits installer.cs this class is a static one and has an extension method called add habits which extends the iService collection and accepts an i configuration. I've moved all the DI stuff from the program.cs over here to clean up the program.cs. Over here we have the add scope for i habit service, the application db context and the validators from the current assembly. Over here we have as well a use habits endpoint extension methods for the i application builder. This one doesn't necessarily need to be in the habits installer, but it's over here for the current time, for the current implementation. What it basically does, it's an extension methods for an interface that I've added over here in the endpoints infrastructure. So the interface itself is called i endpoints definition and has a single method called configure endpoints which accepts an I endpoint route builder. So what we can do with this interface is basically have this small bootstrapper static class, which has three methods, essentially the use endpoints and two use endpoints and one get endpoints definition from assembly. So basically what we are doing is we are getting all the classes that implement this one specific I endpoints definition interface and we are configuring all the endpoints via the configure endpoints method on each of those classes. So we are scanning the assembly, we're getting those classes and we are setting up the endpoints via this configure endpoints method on each of those classes pragmatically without having to specify each of the classes themselves. Uh, how does that look is basically we could go to the habits model over here and go to the endpoints. We have the habit endpoints class over here. So it inherits from I endpoints definition and what has changed from the previous video is basically we now have this method. We still have the group that we've previously created but we've kind of replaced a little bit the endpoint definitions. So we have the same group map post but instead of the old structure right now we have a dedicated method down below which is a private as static async method that returns a task of our result it basically accepts all the old parameters that the previous implementation had but it makes it a little bit cleaner and I don't have the IntelliSense getting crazy for me over here. Uh, for the other methods, it's the same. So we are getting the habit by ID async, which basically has this int ID, which is defined in the route itself. And we are passing it over here, the habit service and the cancellation token. As well, I've added a couple more endpoints, which is one for getting all habits async one for updating the habit async, where we basically first update the ID of the habit from the model based on the path. Then we're calling the update habit async. And if the habit is null, well, this method right here returns a nullable habit. And if the habit is that was returned is null, it means we have not found the habit in our database. If everything is okay, we're returning a results okay. Right now, this null check over here is basically for us is a placeholder since we will be refactoring this endpoints when we get to the one off library or the results library that I prefer. And as well, we have the remove habits async method over here, which accepts an ID and an I have it service. It basically checks if the habit exists, if it exists, if it doesn't exist, sorry, it returns a not found. If it exists, it 
removes the habit async itself. So the configure endpoints looks like this. So the group, as I said, for each of the endpoints, we have this definition, which looks similar to how we are previously doing it, but it's all neatly organized under one method over here. What this approach with I endpoints definition allows us to do is basically have another way to implement it is like this. I've removed the endpoints over here just to not get into issues. So get all habits to let's say it's version two. So this looks more like the minimum, sorry, the mediator and secrecy stuff that you can find on the internet where you have one endpoint definition per class. So basically separation of concerns, you can have here structure like for use case structure, etc., etc. This endpoint, this minimal API is not that big to go with this approach. So I would mostly prefer to have all the API endpoints for the habits under a single class and then just call those. But you still have the possibility to define one class per endpoint and then configure everything you need over here. It's still feasible and it works just as well. I don't need this get all habits endpoints definition right now. So I'm just gonna remove it. Other changes that have taken place is basically the contract for the service for the update method instead of a boolean I'm returning right now a normal habit and over here in the habit service we have all the imp new implementations so first of all we have the get habits async which gets all the habits from the database transforms it to a list and returns it we might use mapper with projections in the future and as well add pagination in a future video uh, we don't currently have the get habits current streak and the get calendar information right now. It's scheduled for the next video. But we have the update habit async method over here where we are first retrieving the first or default habit by ID. If the habit is null, we are returning a null. If the habit is found, we are just updating its name marking it for updation and saving the changes and returning back the model. As well, we have this remove habits, habit async, which removes it by ID. It just is a basic implementation of the removal. So uh, we already ensure that the entity exists before removing it over here. We can as well. I would add it over here just in case, but hey, it's a minimal API with a minimal implementation. So let's not just over engineer it. And as far as I've read some news, it I might be wrong, but we might be getting an remove by ID method pretty soon. Not sure if I'm wrong over here, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, this is the basic implementation right now that we have of the habit service. So I'm going back to the program. We basically have, we are calling once the add habit, and then we are calling only once the use habit endpoints, which basically calls the extension method that we have defined in the infrastructure endpoints bootstrapper class over here. So going back to the program.cs, as you can see, we've cleaned up it quite a bit with moving everything to add habits and having this installer in the future, we will have one more installer when we will get to the user management part. So this program.cs will get a little bit bigger, but not that much. Yeah, so that's mostly it for today's video. I wanted to keep it short and concise to not waste too much of your time. And I've written most of the code behind the scene. It's an experiment, it's a test that I might not do in the future or I might do if you really like it. If you like it, leave a thumbs up button, subscribe, click the notification bell and yeah, see you next time. Have fun.